I fucking love being scared. <laughs> this is a direct result of my upbringing, as you're about to find out, but scary movies, yes. Haunted houses, yes. Witchy shit, absolutely. Ouija boards, no. <laughs> no one here should ever fuck with Ouija boards. Am I sick? Maybe a little, but everybody can agree that getting a little spooky is fun every once in a while. And there's nothing scarier than a dance mom. But not for the reasons you might think. My mom's side of the family owned a small business in East County, San Diego that opened the year I was born. It was a dance studio called The Dance Machine, and while there were classes for all levels and ages, it mainly catered to competition kids. Most of you are probably wondering, wait, like dance moms? And the answer is yes, exactly like dance moms. My mom and my aunts and my mom, or my grandma, were my teachers. Um, we trained six days a week, afternoon through the evening, and oftentimes my mom and I were the last to leave the dance studio. Late, late at night, she would finish her last private lesson around 10 p.m. while I finished my homework in the lobby. Being the last to leave was creepy. Uh, our car sitting alone in the dark, in a quiet parking lot, we would leave and lock up the studio together, me checking all of the doors after she locked them and anxiously running to the passenger side of the car to wait for her to unlock my door. Sometimes she did right away, but there were other nights. <laughs> On these nights, the sky was a little darker than normal and there was a little extra electricity in the air. I would see her eyes sparkle with excess energy and my breath would catch in my chest as we were locking up the dance machine, just the two of us. Something you have to know about my mom is she had me when she was a teenager, so she was very, very young. I'm not sure if I would say this is the reason we have always been so close, but it definitely brought a specific energy to my childhood. <laughs> and there were perks like sharing clothes and liking the same music. We had a very Gilmore Girls relationship. My love and my admiration for her is rooted in so many of our joint experiences. I can only assume now as an adult and a mom that we were learning some of life's lessons together because we were both just kids. She's always been very mischievous. She's down for a practical joke, lives to spill the tea, but most of all, she loves to scare the shit out of her kids. I'm her oldest daughter, but she's also adopted three more kids in the recent years with her husband. My siblings are eight, seven, and five. They live in a big house with a pool in swampy Orlando, Florida. All three of the kids have a very real fear that drinking too much pool water will result in a baby alien bursting through their chests. <laughs> Why do they feel this way? Because after a frustrating day swimming, my mom pulled up that iconic clip from the movie Alien where the baby space monster tears through that poor man's torso and told them that this is what happens to you when you drink too much pool water. <laughs> there were tears and a handful of sleepless nights, but none of them drink pool water anymore, at least not on purpose. In 1992, I was five years old and all I wanted for Christmas was my size Barbie. That's right, a Barbie that was my height and dressed in a beautiful ballet costume that I could wear too. I vividly remember that Christmas morning and receiving a number of fun gifts. An easel, an art supplies, a stocking full of candy, days of the week underwear, and last but not least, my size Barbie. I was stoked. I spent the morning dancing with her, showing her around our apartment, and of course, stripping her down so that I could be the ballet princess. <laughs> that afternoon, we went to my grandparents' house for family dinner. My size Barbie stayed at home in her birthday suit while I decided to stay at my grandparents' house for a sleepover with my cousins. I could tell that my mom was disappointed uh, because I didn't want to come home to finish the holiday with her and my dad drink some eggnog, maybe watch Christmas Story one more time before bed, but I had made up my mind. The next morning, I come home, and the energy from Christmas Day has dissolved. The living room still looks chaotic, but my size Barbie is not where I left her, under the tree. I walk to my bedroom, and I tense as I turn the corner. The naked Barbie is sitting on my bed, 
with her head unnaturally angled toward the door. <laughs> As if she were just sitting there, waiting for me. I run back out into the living room in a panic. Mom, did you put my, my Barbie on the bed? Well, no, sweetie. She was so sad when you didn't come home last night. She was up all night walking around the apartment looking for you. My size Barbie promptly was shoved into the back of my closet. I couldn't part with her just yet, but there was something really unsettling to a five-year-old about the thought of Barbie being out and about, free to roam the apartment. She did manage to make one more appearance a couple of weeks later. I was playing in the bathtub and saw something odd out of the corner of my eye. I do a double take and realize it's my size Barbie leaning around the door frame with a butter knife taped to her hand as her arm robotically moves up and down a la psycho. I may have never played with her again, but if you ask my parents, it's the best $300 they've ever spent. <laughs> Flash forward years later and our night spent at the dance studio, I'm now 11 and accustomed to my mom's unconventional sense of humor. It's dark, it's late, and I can tell that she's feeling cheeky. She climbs in on the driver's side of the car and I wait for her to unlock my door. She hesitates, looking at me with her telltale smirk. The door unlocks and I frantically pull as she locks it again before I can open it. She does it again and again and I feel the anxiety setting in. She looks behind me with her eyes wide in terror as I repeatedly pull at the door handle, desperate to be beat her to the punch and get the damn door open. I frantically glance over my shoulder, expecting the worst. Freddy, Jason, the little puppet from the cover of R.L. Stein's Goosebumps, Night of the Living Dummy? Slappy. <laughs> Nothing. I look back, and she's laughing. She lets me in. I buckle up, letting out an exasperated mom as I catch my breath, but I know the night is far from over. As she starts the car and we leave the empty parking lot, she dramatically looks up at the sky and says, Looks like it's one of those nights. <laughs> My heart drops. Mom, stop. No, it's not. We go silent, some trashy late night talk show radio playing faintly in the background while I mentally prep for what's to come. The condo that we lived in had limited parking. This meant that my mom and I had to park on the street, which was so far away from our place, at least in the mind of a child. To get to our home, we would have to walk through one parking lot and the main square of the complex, a twisty, turny pathway surrounded by ferns and trees. After that, another round of parking, and last, a walk by the dark, creepy, shared laundry room before finally getting to our door. I knew that as soon as we parked, it was game on. So my mom parks her car on the busy street, and I immediately release my seatbelt, grab my dance bag, and scramble out of the car, locking and slamming the door in one quick movement. But it's too little, too late. My mom is already sprinting away from me. And I know that I'm going to have to get through the entire complex alone, knowing that she or any other scary creature could jump out to scare me at any moment. So many times in the past, I had begged her to tell me what she meant by one of those nights. It didn't necessarily mean there was a full moon, so I had already ruled out werewolves. Vampires and the living dead were still on the table, though. And that particular night, I was not in the mood to take my time and look for her. I had already lost sight of her and decided that my best strategy would be to run as quickly as I could. The strategy actually paid off. I cut through parking lot one, and the jungle courtyard in no time. I look both ways before I sprint through the second parking lot. I pause at the bottom of our condo stairs, looking toward the dark doorway of the laundry room that I would have to pass in order to get home. Ah, sweet home. In my gut, I was sure that the laundry room certainly contained some dark terror crouched and poised to pounce at me as soon as I hit the top of the stairs. One of those nights indeed potentially the last night of my short 11 years on this earth. <laughs> I slowly climbed the stairs, never tearing my eyes away from that doorway. As I approached the top, I held my breath, attempting to make as little noise in the still dark night as possible. I reached the landing and nothing. I do a weird run skip thing to my front door and push it open. My mom is waiting in the hallway. She sees my panic quickly melting into relief 
and we both start cracking up hysterically. The game and the rush of being scared, as always, bringing us together when all was said and done. She really knew how to commit to the bit. There were more of those nights as I grew up, and my dad even let me in on some sweet, sweet payback a couple of years later. My mom's favorite slasher film is Halloween, and the immortality of Michael Myers terrifies her. My dad hired one of the dance dads from the dance machine, scary guy, huge at about 6'5", to follow my mom around on Halloween day, starting at work, in the full Michael Myers mask and jumpsuit. <laughs> he followed us while we trick-or-treated. He took the gig seriously and followed for hours, stalking her slowly and freaking her out, and we all played along until the very end of the night when he unmasked and joined my family for a beer after all the kids had finished trick-or-treating. The tradition of scaring each other and getting scared together is one that I hold dear and sacred. I could tell a hundred more stories, scaring my cousins, spooky sleepovers, and simply telling ghost stories around the fire. I feel like these things all have the power to bring family and friends closer together. I have a three-year-old daughter who already gets a kick out of jump scares, giving and receiving, and I'm so proud, and I can't wait to uh, create some traditions of our own. And I know that sooner or later, it will once again be one of those nights. Thank you.